Hey, the purpose of this video is to walk through the AGI Super Sting administration software. In a separate video, I will discuss the Earth Imager software. But for now, let's just launch uh, AGI SS admin. So unlike the Earth Imager software, this software is designed to talk directly to the unit. The Earth Imager software is processing software. So if you were in the field running a uh, ERT survey, this is the software that you would essentially be using. So I'm going to break this video into two parts. The first part is going to discuss the SuperStink command creator, which is the window that we're actually in. If you look up here, it has the version of the software and it says command creator. And then there's an icon here that shows a, uh, a pseudo section which will actually launch the program itself. Uh, the other software that we'll look at in a separate video will actually be the control center software. And for that, I have to run a, uh, a hardwired serial port uh, to the computer, uh, to the, uh, from the computer to the SuperSync itself for communications. And again, I'll do that uh, to show you how to configure the SuperSync directly in a separate video. Okay, so for now, what is the purpose of the SuperSync command creator? Well, essentially it allows us to simulate our job, give us an estimate of uh, our depth of penetration, how the spread is going to look, and how long is it going to take for us to actually physically complete a project. So working from left to right, the first thing we have to uh, consider is what type of unit that we have. At Nate, we have the single channel IP Super Sting unit. So um, R1 through R8, they're exactly the same unit. All that there is is the, the manufacturer, Advanced Geosciences Incorporated, they charge more for a multi-channel instrument uh, that gets unlocked via the software. So what I mean is the hardware is exactly the same. Um, if you pay less money, you get a single channel unit, which reduces how many lines you can run at one time. If you pay more to the, 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 the company, AGI, they'll send you essentially a firmware unlock code that lets you run multi-channel recordings. Of course, here in academia, um, we don't need to run anything more than uh, one channel. Of course, and ours is also set up to run an IP survey. Uh, number of electrodes. So at Nate, we have uh, two spreads of 28 electrodes. So uh, 28 plus 28 is 56. And when we consider our soil resistivity test, we only use four electrodes. This is working exactly the same as the soil resistivity test, except now we have 56 electrodes over a long spread, anywhere from uh, a spacing all the way up to, uh, to five meters, so, so quite a bit of uh, cable to deal with. Um, and of course, it's going to uh, hook up the probes or cycle through the probe configurations automatically. And you'll see what that looks like in the simulation here. Uh, ray types, slumber J, uh, Venner, uh, dipole, dipole. Uh, again, if we scroll through, and of course we can make our own custom. If we uh, if we click through these, we'll see that sometimes we have uh, different options that are available to us. For example, with this Venner, it gives us what's called an expansion factor, which allows us to simulate uh, projecting the array. Uh, depth of investigation, perhaps shallower or deeper than our needs. I'll just leave this at nine and then I'll come back to it and I will uh, show you um, uh, what that does at, at a later date. So uh, let me just turn off the delay. And what happens is I'm going to go run a simulation. Getting all these Dell error messages. Okay, and I have electrodes from 1 to 56 on surface. I didn't tell the unit what the electrode spacing is. You can actually set that within the uh, the software right here, the uh, the control center software. Right now, it just calls that ES electrode spacing. So uh, whatever our electrode spacing happens to be, the maximum depth of investigation here is going to be 520. 5.2 electrode spacing. 
So again, if we had electrode spacing of two meters, the super sting is gonna be able to model to 10.4 uh, meters in depth. And you can see that we have a fairly um, uniform uh, pseudo section that will be created, um, not high definition at the bottom or at the top by any means, but a fairly uniform distribution. It's gonna take 395 separate commands. So what that means is 395 uh, separate cycles where each cycle is, um, each measurement is compressed, comprised of two cycles. So actually it's gonna run the array uh, 800 or 790 times of, uh, of injection and reading. And it's going to take each cycle is going to be 1.2 seconds. So essentially at each measurement point, each dot that represents two cycles where the unit is pulsing two times each for 1.2 seconds. And then it's going to go on changing automatically the electrical configuration to get other uh, dots here. Okay. So it's going to take 395 uh, commands uh, in order to do that, of two cycles each, and the approximate measure time is just going to be over an hour at this array configuration. So one hour, one minute, and 53 seconds. So now the simulation, again, goes pretty fast because I don't have any sort of delay. And what's important for you to notice here is in the vent array how these electrodes um, uh, or automatically change change positions in order to get uh, or, or to accomplish the readings that are required. So I'm going to slow that down to one second. So you can see here that we have the uh, outer electrodes, the A and B, those are the current electrodes. And uh, they have, uh, they're in blue and red, and then the inner electrodes are going to be M and N, and they're in green. So you could see that uh, at any given point, uh, the, the B current electrode is steady, and then the other three electrodes basically work their way back to it. And if you look at our uh, simulation window, you could see at any given point which electrodes happen to be active. You can see the command number is increasing. So we're going to go all the way to 395 readings. And this is simulated at a quicker time than, than the, the real time. And again, if it was in real time, it would be uh, one minute and, uh, or sorry, one hour, one minute and 53 seconds to, to change, uh, to complete the, the, the uh, simulation. So if I want to slow down the simulation, I can put a delay of 2000 milliseconds or two seconds in order to slow down so I could see exactly what uh, point in, in the subsurface is being created by what electro configuration. Again, I could kind of walk it along with my mouse. Or if you feel like that is like watching paint dry, you could go ahead and you could decrease the delay. And get an idea of how the pseudo section is being created. So what's great about the super sting is this switching is automatic. So basically you set up the array, you do some contact resistivity tests to make sure that you have good contacts of the array with the probes with the ground. And after that, you basically hit a button and you collect data. Again, so you wanna make sure that your batteries are going to last throughout the survey, they don't get interrupted. Uh, the Super Sting does have the capability of running another uh, 12 volt cable, so you can have 12, so you can have an extra battery on backup in case uh, you are concerned that your main main battery won't won't last through a survey. But a typical uh, marine battery, a deep cycle battery, will get you through uh, a day uh, pretty much uh, with ease. Again, we're running 400 volts, so it is a significant amount of, um, of voltage that's going through the, through the ground. Okay, so that's the Venner array. If I want to change the expansion factor, I'll put down the five, I'll just rerun the simulation. I'll turn down the delay. You'll notice now that the measure time went to 36 minutes, 49 seconds, fewer commands. And what we lost obviously was the depth of investigation. If I want to increase that, let's go to 20.
more commands required, longer time, but definitely changes the, the geometry as well. Again, so we have an increase in uh, depth, 8.6 ES, whatever the, the spacing is. But again, we have some significant um, blind spots here. So if we were to run the array and you know, if our target was down in this area here, we'd probably have to shift the array, um, like physically pick it up, move it over, plop it back down to fill in these gaps. And of course, what we end up doing is we get a whole bunch of redundant data. And this is something that we could filter out in the software. But um, you kind of, it's nice to play around with what your target's going to be and adjust your array spacing uh, accordingly. Because honestly, you know, using the Venn array to get a target down here, you might have to move the array quite a few times. So perhaps one of these other configurations is better. So let's look at the Schlumberger array. Again, I will uh, just leave the delay at zero, and I'll simulate it. That has an expansion factor of 20. By default, it's actually 9. I'm going to put it back to 9. Okay, and uh, we have a, uh, a broader depth of investigation at, at, at down deep. Okay, so like the, unlike the previous Venner array with the high expansion factor, um, you have a better chance of uh, finding your target at depth. Uh, one nice thing about the Schlumberger array is you're get, going to get a fairly high definition readings near the surface. And when you're considering the amount of time required versus the Venner array, they're about equal. So 59 minutes and 50 seconds. So what's happening with how the electrodes are are configured in the Schlumberger array. Again, the blue and the red are going to be the current electrodes, and the inner electrodes, the M and N, are going to be the um, the potential electrodes. So you get an idea of how they move out through the automatic switching in order to create this data set. Let's speed up the simulation. the way through. Okay, very good. Uh, let's go to the dipole dipole. This one's going to take the longest to do. And uh, you will see why. I'm just going to go ahead and run the simulation. Very good um, resolution uh, near surface. Fair, decent resolution down deep. What are you losing? Uh, time. So here in its base configuration, you're looking at uh, 491 commands. Again, it's cycling two times. It's inducing current uh, or, or transmitting uh, voltage and current into the ground uh, two times for every uh, 691 commands. So again, you're looking at um, less than 1,400 different uh, pulses, and it's taking a lot longer time. What's interesting about this one is, let's go ahead and increase the delay and simulate it. Again, you'll notice that your potential electrodes and your current electrodes are acting much differently than they did in the Venner array and even in the Schlumberger array is now that uh, they are clustered separately. So this time the, uh, the potential electrodes are, are walking out and the, uh, the current electrodes are, are together in pairs uh, as you sweep through this array. Go ahead and I'll increase the speed a bit. So as you play with this and if you find commands or, or you find a simulation that will meet your, your needs, uh, again, you could do what's called a save a CMD file, save a command file, and it's going to take these values that we have set and you could uh, upload them back to the SuperSting device itself. And then when you're out in the field, you just find your, your command file 
uh, appropriately named and you run your survey. So depth of investigation, perhaps not as great as uh, the, the Schlumberger array. It's fairly close. But again, uh, arguably much better resolution. So I believe you have a case study uh, that you will be doing or have done. And they'll talk about the, uh, the rays. I believe it's for induced polarization. Uh, at any rate, uh, the dipole-dipole array is, is, I think, uh, what the, uh, the mining company decided to use in order to achieve this uh, excellent resolution. Of course, you can make your own array. You can load a command file from the Super Sting. You can load it and you can simulate it. Or if you ran a job and you want to see what it looks like after the fact, you go ahead and do that. Um, you can run uh, different uh, simulations here for different electrode configurations. Again, that's one that really focuses on the, the near surface high definition, uh, pole dipole. Okay. And you can just see, you know, it's, it's going very fast. Hopefully, I could uh, get to it. You can see what's going on. Let's go ahead and rerun that. Stop that. Let's go ahead and rerun that. This is a little bit different where it's only using um, one current electrode and two potential electrodes in order to accomplish, you know, its, its achieved goal. So anyways, that's a brief overview of the uh, command creator software again. To, uh, to simulate your job, to see if your depth of penetration is going to be what you will uh, achieve. And um, you can play around with the spacings, uh, etc., in order to um, make sure that you're going to be able to hit your target. Um, and again, you're going to have these, these blind zones due to uh, the geometry uh, as designed, so again, if you need to walk your array out, you need to be able to know how far you're going to walk it out in order to capture uh, the data that you had missed uh, through this triangulation. Okay, so that's going to be the end of the uh, Command Creator video. I'll catch you with the uh, Super Sting Control Center uh, demo in a following video.